first of all, I would like to congratulate you again for winning your group Supra Chat uh, a few days ago. Congratulations, you literally slayed the whole thing. Yes. Did you expect to win? Thank you. But I think it was Did you expect to um, win? I don't know. I was just having this really friendly, good conversation with Ivan and I left the rest to God because Malaysia, Turkey, Cambodia, Thailand, they were so good. I mean, all of them in my yeah, group is so amazing. Yeah. So you're off to a good start. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah, so with only what? A week left? What's your current mindset? One week left. I know, right? So weirdly, I'm very calm right now. I, I mean, I expected like you know, things all over the place and, you know, the stress, tension, but yeah, I feel calm. Yeah, very calm. Yeah. Lavisha Sharma official. Wow. She, um, her account is verified. You go, girl, she is saying. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Oh, wow. There are so yeah. many comments. So, Thank you so much. How do you feel that you're getting all this love and support from your fellow countrymen as you compete in the upcoming Miss Super? Only gratitude. I mean, if you watch my stories or posts, I use a lot of the, you know, word gratitude and grateful. Because I don't know what else to say. Yes. <laughs> It just feels so warm. I know, I know. Me representing, chasing my dreams is fine, but a whole country supporting, and in fact, a lot of uh, other international, you know, pageant fans were supporting. There's only lots of love and That's gratitude true. to give back. And do you feel any pressure right now? Because let's face it, your predecessor almost, almost made it huge <laughs> in the competition last year. Rikita, right? She was still amazing. Ritika. She was amazing. She was fire on stage. <laughs> I remember I was in between my Miss India when she was in uh, Miss Supranational. I remember able to, her seek a, uh, to get in touch with her, to get some advice, tips from her in terms of how you respect. I did have a few calls with her. I did have a few sensitization calls with her and I know that she's just a call away from me. But honestly, there is no stress, stress. I'm going to go to Poland, have a blast, have an amazing experience, meet my Supra sisters. It's my first ever time going to Europe, so. What are your I'm going to have a blast. The upcoming <laughs> what memories. are you looking forward to? So I saw this beautiful resort that we'll be staying at. <laughs> so I'm going to take tons of pictures and videos and, you know, maybe experience a lot of good things, good food items, and go on a good tour in Poland. I just want to experience it, like, not to the fullest and have no yes. regrets. Yes, yes. So for sure, you'll definitely have a good time. I think the weather is perfect for you girls to really explore around Malibu, I know. Yeah. Yes. Right. Will you be coming for the finale? I wish, I wish, I wish. I mean... Oh my gosh. I, I mean, I, if money were not an option in this world, I would have loved to go there. It's, it's just, you know, I really have to, you know, to control and monitor my budget. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. You definitely. One day. yeah. No I, oh, let's so finally, let's finally, let's finally <laughs> talk about your candidacy. They have so many questions for you. So, you know, they're all asking us. Tell us about your evening gown. Tell us about your preparation. There's the Miss Elegance, the Top Model Challenge Awards. I mean, challenges. How are you preparing for it? Any sneak peek for us regarding it? Okay. So, a few days ago, I tried my evening gown. And I was starstruck, okay? I want you guys to feel how I felt in the moment when you see me on the stage for the first time in that gown. It was that beautiful. And I cannot wait for you guys to see it. I'm not going to give any more details. It's a surprise. Even just the color. <laughs> I can say the designer's name though. It's Bhavna Rao. She's an Indian designer. She okay, makes so there you gowns. go. So this, so is this your first time you're revealing that she will be the one making your gown? 
So let's go to her Instagram <laughs> yes. account and check out the silhouette, <laughs> her past and present collections oh, to see to have oh. for us to have an idea how how your gown will look like. So she will do all your gowns for all the for the prelims, for the top model, for the Miss Elegance challenges. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Just wait and watch. It's just like a month away, like a few. There, you know. I also watched your intro video. Wow, you have. You have, you have such, such a beautiful hometown. My gosh, I've never been to India. I you know. haven't. You should. I I'll be your tour. You have such a beautiful country. The culture, anything about it, the the food, the culture, the sceneries, the sights, even the practices, the customs, the traditions. It really makes up a, a one interesting culture. Yes, a week or a month wouldn't be enough to take so, an entire tour. You should I come know, here right. for So longer. now, now that you're here in Miss Supranational, how does how does joining Miss Diva and now you're on your way to Miss Supranational have impacted your life so far? Uh, whoever has been following me since my Miss India days, uh, you must be knowing. Especially after I got crowned as Miss Diva Supranational. I was this little girl, okay, and it was very evident. And it's been a few months since then, and there's this transformation, okay? I feel it myself, this woman that I've become. It's not just walking or, you know, doing my hair and makeup. It's about how I put my opinions in front and how am I carrying my myself. Everything has changed. And the panelists that we have, I can't thank them enough, you know? It's not that they changed me into a different person. They just enhanced who I am. So it's been one of the most amazing and how journeys are you, so far. Do you see this platform? I want to ask, do you see this, this uh, title? Do you see this platform as a job title or as an ambassadorship for you? I think everything comes up to a job in the end, but it depends on how you take it. It's all on the perspective and the attitude that we carry, right? To me, it's more like being their spokesperson, like being the right voice for them, for who they stand for. And it's about connecting people, you know, and to do something really impactful. That's true. That's true. So, and I see the way how you and I, I like how the way you have been doing it through implementing your advocacies. I mean, one look at your Instagram and I have been seeing a lot of things that you have been doing, beach cleanup drives, and then you're also um, teaching your community about the reduction of plastic waste usage about it. So for you, it's like, is it like more like an ambassadorship or uh, uh, a marriage of both worlds since you know you've been using this to amplify your voice when it comes to your to the causes close to your heart right to me it's more than just a ground up project because i thought of this uh title planet a my name of the project around like two years ago and i'm a fashion design student i've been seeing a lot of fabrics getting wasted for instance if i have a piece of cloth i make a garment out of it but what happens to the rest of the tiny bits and pieces of fabric? They end up in landfills. And since most of them are synthetic fibers and you know how that process goes, they take exactly. millions of years you to know, For the longest time, I thought, you know, uh, fo uh, food is the one that really fills up our entire um, waste spaces or our entire landfills. But I was so shocked to find it, to find out that it's mostly clothes. When it comes, when, you know, when we talk about food, as like you said, it's so easy to decompose. But when it comes to clothes, it takes millions of years to decompose. So, wow. I never thought one piece you know, of clothing could affect right. home environment. That's right. And you know, I think, that's right. That's right. And you know, that is the entire beauty of the Indian culture. You know how? Because Khadi especially during the industrialization, uh, Mahatma Gandhi, he introduced Khadi to us again. So India usually uses all biodegradable fabrics, which go back to nature. They come from nature, they go back to nature. Yeah. It's a cycle. And ever since the past fashion, it just ends up. And also my project, like you rightly said, uh, it has three pillars. 
one is about educating people about the uh, meaning of sustainability like we all know what sustainability is right you would have heard it you know one or the other place but do we really know the meaning of it that is the real question and secondly it's about accepting and you know increasing the acceptability of you know slow fashion is what i think people usually think ah sustainable clothes they might be a little boring but no i am here to change that perspective and the last thing like you like uh, rightly said it's about reusing recycling and so i so i assume most of your day. wardrobe for miss supranational are upcycled pieces or mostly uh, mostly clothes that you yourself did you cuz you're a fashion designer right i am i'm studying i'm yet to graduate but you know that is the problem uh, we try to incorporate as much as we can but it was really difficult to source so here i want to build this bridge between glamour and fashion which why is do you think why do you think fashion and sustainability hoping... is such a becoming a huge buzzword in the pageant industry right now <laughs> I feel like uh, pageantry and fashion are like so closely related. We wear so many cool outfits, and we inspire people to, you know, take ideas from what we wear. It's not just about what we speak, but uh, we also inspire people to, you know, take ideas and inspirations from what we wear. So setting a trend about sustainability, I think it's really easy to start off with the immediate circle, you know, the immediate environment that we already have. For instance, if I go onto the streets and if I start uh, telling people, listen, sustainability is very important. I don't think anybody is going to listen to it. But pageant community who's been following my journey, it's easier to convince. Exactly. Right. So one so, person at a time. Now that I think about it, you know, I feel like, <laughs> are we all committing a crime against uh, humanity or in the environment just because of we consume? or buy a lot of clothes like you rightly said over consumption you're talking about is one of the biggest problems it's not just in fashion but in everything we as consumers just go to the market without any intentions of buying anything and end up buying yeah. things and coming back home right so we as consumers should change that mindset and especially in fashion thrifting thrifting is a trend right now and we have to you know take care of our clothes so that they are good to thrift not like you can thrift any dirty products for example there is a uh, so there was this donation happening in a lot of continents okay clothes donation where you donate the clothes and then they go to the second world countries so in ghana actually the clothes that they received were not in a good state to wear this is literally not respecting others so we should really be mindful of what we are donating and so it is really important of how we take care of our clothes mm -hmm. how we value them so what, what i'm simple. getting from you is that it's okay to buy second hand clothes every now and it is okay it is okay that is what accepting you know accepting the used clothes but, should be more yeah, but, widespread yeah but do you think uh adopting a very sustainable lifestyle when it comes to purchasing clothes will somehow uh, affect how you how you 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 thrive especially in the pageant industry where everything should always be new everything should be always be current everything should be always grand and glitzy so when we talk about um sustainable there's always this stigma that okay it's dress me down it's second hand it's pre-loved so you know there's 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 this there's this uh negative connotation that you're doing it not to impress when it's supposed to be you know being you know being mindful of making careful choices when it comes to in our environment right so often our stylists they source the clothes they do not buy the clothes so what we wear they go back to the designer most of the times and my personal wardrobe is actually a capsule wardrobe no, you I know what a capsule wardrobe is yet. it's okay capsule wardrobe is as simple as you have 10 different pieces so you mix and match them and uh -huh. create 50 different outfits out of it that's capsule wardrobe 
I'm sure even you must be having a capsule water without. So it's a habit. classic and durable. It is like, like let's say if I have uh, five trousers and five tops, I can mix and match and wear it for every day. You know, I don't dress up top to bottom like all glam. But let's face day. it, you know, when we talk about fashion sustainability and when it comes to ethical and sustainable fashion, it can really get expensive. So a lot of, you know, fashion brands, you know that reduce, that say they want to reduce the impact to the environment or the social and ecological impact to the clothing pieces that they do have, you know, they will impose a higher price to it. So how do you, how do you reconcile that, that, you know, you want to implement a sustainable fashion, but there comes a price as, and at the same time, while being mindful of the impact that it might generate to the environment. You know, slow fashion isn't actually that expensive as you're uh, speaking. For instance, there is Dutlaj, a brand. Uh, it's a Delhi-based brand. Delhi is capital of India. So it's a Delhi-based brand and they upcycle. And I understand where it is coming from because upcycling takes a lot more manpower and a lot more capital. And that is why yeah. the products tend to get a little expensive. Okay, but instead of buying 10 different uh, clothes that you might be wearing only like once or twice you can buy three to four sustainable products right and reuse it for a longer period of time now fashion is also an attitude okay and that attitude should be a little changed wearing new clothes every single day is not exactly. a fashion the way you style it so through your fashion. own way how could you encourage your following to make sustainable fashion choices right now definitely you can use a water bottle let's say i always carry this water bottle it is plastic but it is recyclable and i you know i can use it for a few years i've been using using it for a year now and i know that i can use it for a longer time so instead of using single use plastics you can use something which is more durable in this way you'll be contributing to the lessening of carbon footprint without even knowing and you can carry your own cutlery wherever you're going outside and just, you know, control the temptation of buying more and more and more clothes. You can always borrow and share clothes with your friends, guys. Yeah, there's, yeah, I think it's about time that we should uh, think yeah. about our fashion choices when it comes to the environment. You know, uh, yeah, That's the fashion. Right. If you're... For instance, if you're going on a date, you necessarily don't have to yeah. wear a brand new dress, right? Maybe we can ask your friends or just borrow it. And I do it all the time with my sisters and my So friends. I assume most of your uh, OOTDs, the upcoming pageant, are mostly stuff that you've made, that you made from scratch. Or will there be any? Just to prove your point. Unfortunately, no, but there are a few, uh, you know, sustainable products that are easily biodegradable. You see here, that is the major problem. Me and the team, we sat down, we spoke about it, and we found it so difficult to source the glam outfits that you're talking about, which is why we still have a long way to go. And here, I want to introduce glam and sustainability together. Because when we think of sustainable clothing, you might be yeah. thinking, ah, oh, it's so yeah. boring, right? But it's not. I'm here to prove that point with my own sustainable fashion label. So I think in a year or year and a half, you'll see my own label coming oh, up. Really? But I'm really amazed that at such a young age, you have you already know your purpose in life. And I, lo I love that pageantry is, help, is helping you shape that, right? When it comes to... It definitely did. It made me see who I am and who I can be. And that is why I tell everyone to at least take Yeah, because you, you can really develop life skills. Exactly. It's not always about winning the crown. It is about the journey that you put yourself through. And it takes a lot of courage. So the person that you become in the end, you'll do be... Do you think, um, having what you said, do you think, do you agree with that saying that, you know, a pageant like Miss Supernational is every girl's journey but only one woman's dream or destiny no not at all not at all it is i'll tell you something 
if 80 countries are going there, I think all the 80 countries are winners. We are all winners in our own, our own like respective countries. We are all spokesperson of our own countries. And that comes with a lot of stress and a lot of, you know, transformation. So, so whether you win or not, it will still be an amazing journey. And whether you win or not, it is still going to be a dream come true for yes, everyone. Yes, because it's, it's a once in a lifetime experience. And, you know, even if no matter exactly. how you try to prepare for it, but, you know, if luck isn't. It's just not in our hands in the end. You, all you can do is experience it and live in the moment, you know. That is the best you can do. Maximum to maximum, I can focus on not having any regrets. If I'm standing on the stage, I don't want to have any regrets if I watch that video a few months later. So having no regrets is what I'm focusing on. So you don't mind the, ex the extreme cutthroat competition that you'll be facing. Once you set foot there in Poland, of course you're going to be competitive, but at the same time you'll learn how to enjoy. So that's the thing with me. Even when I'm in the competition, I don't look at it yeah. like a competition, you know. That is the thing. Even in Miss India, I noticed uh, I didn't feel the competition until the very end, even when I'm on the stage. I was like, may the best girl win. And whoever deserves it should win. Because what organization yes. is looking for differs. And like I said, I'm going to make some best friends for life. And if any of my Supra sisters are watching this, I just cannot wait you to guys meet have a you. Uh, I have a WhatsApp group for you guys to hang out. Uh -huh. We do. And we are in touch. We do comment on each other's posts on Instagram. and So we do know who we are and you know who each other's men are really coming now, from. And how do you thing. plan to stand out in the competition? I'll repeat this again. There is no strategy. I'm going to go there to enjoy myself. In the end, it's all the experience. And that's what I believe in. It's about making memories or, you know, having these little moments with other contestants or even the team members and leaving that impression. Again, it's not about winning, right? So there is literally no strategy. It's not like a game plan that I'm going on with. I'm here to leave good impressions and have people for the lifetime. Yes. It's about But I'll answer right? my own question to you. I think it's your beauty. It's your eloquence. It, are Indian queens so eloquent? And I think that's a really good way that, uh, that you put it in, you know, it's very funny also the way you put it, but I think it's because of the panelists, the kind of training that the organization mm -hmm. focuses on. Because I looked up to all the beauty queens that you are mentioning before sitting here, I watched all their journeys and honestly, it's because of yes. their journeys that I'm here today, right? So I know where, like, you know, where's this question coming from? I know what you're saying. Also, thank you so much to everyone who's commenting. I'm, yeah. I mean, I can't read, yeah. but so, thank you. Yeah, it's really the eloquence. I mean, I think every citizen in India is brimming with eloquence. I don't know. You guys must be forced to be reading a lot of books. You are, we are brought up. Who's your favorite you. Indian beauty queen? There are so many. It would be so unfair. Shreddy Shetty, Manushi Chiller, Aishwarya Rai, Sushmita Sen. I, I can't. There's like this long list. It continues and continues. Yeah. Everyone. I'm so like in awe. Especially, you know, uh, during oh. Miss India, I met Subhan Rao, uh, Miss World Asia 2019. And I remember I was having these dance rehearsals like for a subcontest evening. And mm. I see her practicing as well. I was starstruck. You had to see my face. And now when I talk to her and look back at that day, I'm just grateful, you know, universe does that, you know, universe adds that magic and makes things happen for you. Yeah, okay. Point. Talking about your country, I think, you know, your eloquence, your culture, your traditions are really the best contribution your country has to offer to the world. What about you? What do you think is your country's greatest contribution to the world? Thank you. Right from knowledge to food to cultures yoga traditions everything the world has seen from india it's incredible which is why i feel very proud to be representing a country like india and also the way you're saying the eloquence eloquence i think it's because 
all our mother tongues, all the Indian languages that we speak have certain like you know uh, the way we twist our tongues while we speak like if i speak in telugu or hindi they all have these matras okay maybe that is why it's easier for us to grasp english and also speak it in a poised way it's about the languages yeah. that we speak in passionate well. perspectives uh, also agrees with what you said the english language is only a medium the eloquence comes from the culture upbringing vibrancy of india oh. through through you know um there's so much about the culture you know even with your cuisine the way how you guys cook your dishes you use a lot of herbs and spices that's truly really unique of your own i'm hungry stop <laughs> yeah so on the flip side so on the flip side whenever whenever oh, go, go ahead okay, go ahead. i'm cutting you, you. Oh, please whenever you're in india just call me and i'll tell you oh what to gosh, one day i'll come to india promise i mean you have to you're missing out on some major yeah. things and i'll come to your country so let's and then you talk about the around. flip side then so we've been talking about how you know india has a vibrant culture and a lot of passionate people that that uh comes with it so i wonder if we think about the opposite what would you say is the most commonly held misconception about your culture um i think a lot of people might think that india is still a developing country um that not everything you can see is not concrete and you know develop like even people's mindsets are like a little backward i think that is one of the biggest myths because i think the way india is contributing in it sector or in fashion or anything is incredible like i'd say that india is the brains yeah. of the world yes would you agree because i just suddenly remember priyanka copra's guesting with oprah where uh, she taught oprah how to to dress, to do the sari there's a lot of you know it's just a one piece textile clothing but you can really do a lot of it I love draping a sari. I love sari. Yeah. It can hug any woman's body without altering at all. It is six yards of pure grace and elegance, you know. So, also, everyone who's watching, if you still haven't watched my introduction on YouTube, I request you to please go click on the link in my yes, bio and yes, comment, yes, like, and share, hashtags. please. Yeah, it'll help yeah. me. <laughs> The, yeah, the correct, correct hashtags, hashtags. and Thank the you. right emoticon, which is like yeah, yeah, which is like like not not the hard <laughs> emoticon on Facebook, okay? So, so from so we're <laughs> down we're down to my last few questions, you know. So what you're telling me okay. is that okay. uh, since you said that the mis the mis the for you the misconception is about your country being a. a being still a developing country so for you you wouldn't change anything yeah. about your culture or if there's any what would you change about it honestly it wouldn't be right for me to point out my culture that is dated few centuries ago everything that i am all my roots that i come from are because of that culture all i can do is embrace and share that culture with the world I'm literally nobody to point mm -hmm. it out or you know change it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think every culture is is very unique on its own. Every yeah. culture is unique, you know. That's why whenever you go to a different country or a different place, I think we should spend enough time to understand the culture exactly. and be a part of it. What do you love about the, about yes. your culture the most? Uh, you were asking. Were you, was that a question? What the do people you love are the most about your culture are being hospitable every filipino you oh. meet in the world will always extend <laughs> that warmth tamara gray i am a fan of kashiana gray too the performance yeah. i can never yeah. get that out of my and head and apart from the fact that you know, we're both passion wow. loving <laughs> you <laughs> you have some really amazing queens no wow. i mean we look after you guys. I mean, Shushmita, when Shushmita won in our country back in 1994, we were really so blown away with their eloquence that, you know, even that 
we still have to top that substance eloquence that only an 18 year woman an, oh. only an 18 year old indian woman like shushmita sen can say that it, yeah very sweet yeah. of you so, thank you you know there's no doubt that you are the real deal in the competition and as much as i want to chat with you longer for sure you have so many things to do so now that you have this platform and you're about to leave what do you hope to achieve in your foray <coughs> here in miss supranational oh, i didn't catch now that you're that. about Can you please to leave repeat i'm sorry and ready to represent your country yes. in miss supranational i just do not want to have any regrets i want to have a blast and you know have an amazing experience for a lifetime because i know the person who's talking to you right now might not be the same person who'll be talking to you after a month after this experience you might find more eloquence you might find more experiences that i'll be sharing with you little anecdotes of my experience you know experiences like this change you as a person and change is the only constant thing right so i'm looking forward to that change in myself i'm open to learning i'll be a sponge ready to be uh, you know absorbing all the knowledge around me let's just see how it goes going with best positive mindset i can so ready for the third crowd <laughs> we are super ready in here super ready you hear it guys she's super ready <laughs> as early as now yeah India, you're you're sending an amazing candidate in Miss World. So, as my last question, why should you be the next Miss Supranational? Oh wow, I feel like this is a stage question, honestly. I think all the girls coming, I'm sure each one of us deserve to win the crown, you know. But I don't really know what differentiates me, but I do know what defines me. and that is the way i i was brought up it's all you know coming down to my roots my culture and i learned from my mom actually that strength and resilience and reliability are the core values of a human being and with all those qualities i'm here at miss supranational aiming for the best but the best on that note thank you thank you so so much <laughs> from yeah i really had a great time getting to know you leading up to the competition i'm now rooting for you to win of course i'm filipino i'm also rooting for my bet but you know if we won't win i mean i will be happy if you get if your country will get your third crown this year i mean wow india miss diva organization has been really really good in selecting its representative to the upcoming to the upcoming they are my pillar they are my support system the entire miss diva organization literally it takes a village you know to send a girl to an international pageant and they are doing everything you know what i like about you before i wrap this up you really have a very beautiful face it's very soft and if you guys have been watching the supranational uh, crowning moments uh, there seems to be a prototype it's the, the face has to be calm charming serene and you have that you have that and when you talk it's so soft too it's so easy to listen to like you know there's this gentle and calmness and just this certain aura that you project that when you say something people will really easily listen to you so keep that nurture that just your kindness so there you Thank go you. Up, up until now your fans are still debating about your gown how it will look like please about your gown can you just address them for one more time to assuage their fears so that you will really do your best that you have everything in control <laughs> <laughs> the gown is amazing guys okay i just want you all to experience what i felt when i saw the gown for the first time So please wait until I wear it on the stage and all you yes, all Yes 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 just trust her I mean trust her and the organization they know what they're doing I mean we were all stunned by Rikita's gown last year so for sure you know the 
this diva organization will definitely be back with a vengeance this year and they'll make sure that a top five placement or even a win is vengeance you said it's a very powerful word <laughs> yeah because i can feel how heartbroken you guys were me i was so surprised kivita oh, did not make it oh my god yeah so i feel like you know <laughs> there's some sort of, like revenge revenge gown happening come preliminary competition or the finals night <laughs> okay no comment okay, okay. fair enough, no fair comment. enough. So I won't quiz you any more about it because probably my Indian organization will kill me about it. Because, but thank you, thank you so so much, Pragna. I, I I may you may not know me personally, but I'm a huge pageant fan. And even if I won't be able to come there, I mean to oh. come support you personally in Poland. Just so you know, I'm all you rooting. For. I know you're there. In spirit. Yeah, I, know I will you're be there in spirit. spirit. I'll be there in spirit. So, one last. Can you give a message to all your followers and supporters rooting for you to become your country's third Miss Supranational title holder? You know, right before this live, I was actually watching my YouTube comment section and I was overwhelmed, okay? And suddenly I realized it's not just me going to Miss Supranational to, you know, take part in the contest. But then I realized there is a whole country who's cheering on me that kind of support that kind of immense love please continue guys thank you so much it, it just keeps me positive it just you know recharges me so let's do this india and whoever is supporting and, yes thank and you, you can, so guys much. can you also please ex uh, you, i hope you can also extend it through the numerous online votings that you guys will be having can you start with the supra influence challenge uh, award right you know, I really respect whoever is like taking the time to support. I mean, everybody's busy in their own lives, I understand, but they're following my journey, you know, that's what like means the whole world to me, taking that little time and putting efforts. It keeps me going, honestly. There you go. So on that note, thank you so, so much. I'm so happy to have been given a chance to get to know you. To Sir Akash and everyone in Miss Diva organization, thank you, thank you so much for allowing this interview to be possible. God bless you, Pragya, and I'm cheering for you in spirit once you set foot in Poland. Stay safe and hydrated. Kisses all the way, hugs and fight. Kisses all the way from my office here in Manila, moi. <laughs> all right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone who joined. I had a blast talking to him. See you all Thank sometime you. soon. Bye. Bye, gorgeous. Bye.